Cowboys fans, let me turn to you. You bet. Uh, you've done this before. You've been on the prosecution side. First of all, we went from jury selection, opening statements, and our first witness in a day's work. I, I, a bunch of us didn't expect that much today. Was that a surprise to you? It's a little bit of a surprise, even in the Eastern District of Virginia with its notorious rocket docket. But because the judge had done some pre-work on jury selection, using a questionnaire and trying to ferret out some of the, the for-cause strikes, jurors who might have reasons where prosecutors wouldn't have to exercise one of their voluntarily one of their voluntary strikes to have them excused from service. So that process moved really quickly with the jury being struck by the end of the morning and then moving on to opening statements and now this first witness who's on the stand. All right, let me ask you this. I'm not a lawyer. I don't I swear I don't try to even play one on TV. Um, but my reading so far of the opening statements both on the prosecution and defense it sort of read predictably to me, right? That you're, the defense was going to try to take the chief government witness, the person that flipped, and try to discredit that. I mean, it just seemed like it was a standard. So far, everything's gone sort of in a standard way. Is that, is that a fair take? You know, for someone who's not playing a lawyer on TV, I think you're doing a fine job. <laughs> this is well, white collar 101. Um, right. I wondered if we might not see a little bit more nuanced, frankly, of a story about Gates, if they might not have portrayed him as down on his luck and being forced to plead because of his financial situation rather than turning on him. But here they have today, he'll be the bad guy and this will be the boss trying to put it all off on the underling. That's a strategy that only rarely works for a defendant and typically not with a case where the evidence, even the evidence that we know about publicly, it seems to be so solid. Why do you think Mueller chose to pro keep this case and prosecute it and not farm it out the way he's farmed out some of the other indictments? So this happened early. This case was already investigatively in process before Mueller took over. And it was likely the first situation that presented itself to his team. Uh, you know, this may or may not end up being part of the core Russia cases. Many people believe that this is separate. We've heard the judge repeatedly admonish the prosecution in this regard, but it may be that the evidence in this case ties up somehow with the larger Russia right. and the collusion investigation in ways we don't see yet. But even if it doesn't, you know, this is prosecutor's job. When you're in the middle of an investigation and you have a prosec prosecutable case, you go ahead and do it. And this early on in the investigation, they would have had the capacity and the resources to move forward. Obviously, Manafort is also a very tempting target for the government. He's someone who I suspect that they would very much like to have flip and cooperate because he can narrate much of went on during the time that he was the head of the campaign. Right. And of course, during that critical well, time period where the, where the campaign plank about Russia changed. You know, there was about a 72 hour period over the last week where it looked like where Manafort basically decided to drop the civil suit against Mueller. And suddenly, it's obviously, they had a plan B here to try to make Rick Gates the bad guy. Um, it almost looked like they were trying to curry favor with the special counsel's office. Um, do you think, do, what is your, do you think it's possible this trial doesn't end? Uh, this trial doesn't go to its conclusion that it gets sort of stopped because they cut a deal? So that's always a possibility. Some defendants don't plead guilty until they see the whites of the eyes of the jury and decide that they don't like the looks of the juries. Other times a defendant wants to hear some of the evidence come in, perhaps a key witness, maybe hear Gates before they make a decision. But my read on what happened in the civil case, and this was the challenge that Manafort had made in the District of Columbia to Mueller's legitimacy to his jurisdiction over Manafort, that was likely dropped at the appellate stage just for financial reasons. It would have been expensive to go forward. They were very mm -hmm. unlikely to succeed. Yep. Manafort's probably a little bit light on resources now. How important, I mean, Mueller can't afford to lose this, can he? I mean, I, I, the, the, the pressure on him, since this is basically the one test he's got pre whatever he's going to file against the president. Prosecutors never like to lose cases, but you know, the job that prosecutors have is to tell the jury what happened, is to relate to them the evidence and the facts, and then it's up to the jury to make a decision. So sometimes unusual, curious things happen with juries, 
Uh, but the bottom line here is that even more so than in most cases, uh, Mueller will want to win. And a win here will both signify that he is here for serious, legitimate reasons, not a witch hunt, and also give him an edge going into the rest of this year's proceedings. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.